So let's talk about the role of environment in the evolution of antibiotic resistance and the emergence of resistance in, in pathogens. And if we step back in time uh, to when we started to use mass produced antibiotics, the 1940s, most pathogens they used to be highly sensitive to antibiotics. So when antibiotics came, they were revolutionary. They were thought to basically could cure all bacterial infections. You just had the antibiotics, solved the problem. It's really good. Uh, but antibiotic resistance, the ability of bacteria to withstand antibiotic treatment, occurred in the environment long before that. Antibiotic resistance is actually an ancient phenomenon. So this is a picture of a guy that digs out permafrost, frozen soil, 30,000 year old frozen soil. And then when they sequence the DNA in there, they find genes from these guys. Not surprising because they are 30,000 year old. Side by side with bacterial genes that provide resistance to vancomycin, beta-lactams, tetracycline. How is that? They didn't use very much vancomycin in intensive care 30,000 years ago. Still, these bacteria carried these genes. Well, one hypothesis, which is pretty plausible, is that bacteria and microorganisms in general, even fungi, they have been using antibiotic molecules for billions of years, basically, uh, as warfare molecules to uh, defend themselves from bacteria, for example. We know that penicillin is produced by fungi, right? And that prevents bacteria from taking their food, right? If they emit beta lactam or penicillin. So, in this evolution, the bacteria has also evolved defenses against this, right? And most of the antibiotics that we are using today are actually, almost all, are derived from naturally produced molecules that microorganisms produce. So probably this is just the result of uh, billions of years, actually, of evolution between uh, microorganisms. But this, these genes here, they didn't sit in pathogens. They, they were located in other types of bacteria, probably. And as long as these resistance genes stay in harmless bacteria, with harmless, I mean those that generally don't cause disease, there's not a big problem. The, the big problem, the challenge comes if they move to pathogens, bacteria causing disease. That's when we face a real problem. And if you think about it, this could be a rare or even one-time event. When this has happened and we have resistance in pathogens, we cannot turn black, back the clock. Pandora's box is open and you cannot close it again. You have just to deal with transmission after a resistant factor has emerged once. So, of course, there is a value in trying to at least delay emergence of new resistance factors in pathogen as much as possible. And what we see is actually that new resistance factors emerge all the time in pathogens. All the time. After a new type of antibiotics is introduced, it usually doesn't last long until we have resistance in the clinic somewhere, in some pathogens at least. There is not yet, I don't think there's a single type of antibiotic invented that has not been met by resistance in at least some of the pathogens that it's intended to, to be used against. Sometimes it's taken a bit longer, many years, sometimes it's there immediately when you start using it. And the emergence of resistance we're pretty sure that this somehow is promoted by selection pressure from antibiotics. Because when we didn't use antibiotics, 
then there wasn't much antibiotic resistance in our pathogens at all. And which resistance genes should we be most worried about? Well, we argue that actually those genes that have not yet been found in pathogens are the ones we should be most worried about. Because the other ones are already there from an evolutionary standpoint. There are transmission risk with those. But these ones that are not yet in pathogens, they are a bit scary. The problem is that we, it's difficult to, to figure out which ones will make the move from harmless bacteria to the pathogens, of course. So, one may wonder, where does this transfer occur? Where are these resistance genes transferred from harmless bacteria to pathogens? Well, one obvious type of environment where this could happen is, of course, in and on our own bodies and the bodies of the animals which we give antibiotics. Because here we have a strong, very often, a strong selection pressure for antibiotics. We often have the pathogens there. And the gut flora is a quite diverse community with different types of bacteria. And some of those might carry a good resistance factor that if it gets transferred to a pathogen, then we have it, right? So it contains all these three components. So these are very likely environments where we have these uh, um, transfer events. But I talk about that the diversity is high in the, in, the, in the gut, in the human gut, the diversity of different bacteria, and therefore also the diversity of potential donors of genes. But the diversity in the gut is actually pretty small if you look at the diversity of bacteria on the planet around us are not in our guts. And I think that is probably why, the biggest reason why we should be concerned about the environment, the greater environment in the emergence of resistance. It's because of the huge reservoir of genes that are out there. I think there are genes out there to any antibiotic that man mankind will ever develop. Developed. Just waiting to be transferred to a pathogen. Unless we start thinking very differently about how we design and use antibiotics. We have to have some revolutionary thinking of how antibiotics work. Because now we're basically using small molecules that one by one kill uh, the bacteria. If we figure out something very different, maybe then we can solve the problem, but probably not the way we're doing it now. So that's why I think the, the, the environment has an important role in the, in the evolution of uh, antibiotic resistance. I should say also that there's also, this is about the recent evolution of resistance, the emergence from, from um, harmless bacteria to pathogens. There's also been a more ancient evolution of, of these genes over, over, million, over billions of years, basically. And, and, and I didn't cover that in the talk here, but probably most resistance genes have evolved from other functions in the cell, it looks like. <laughs>